Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. By the time you're finished listening to this Pepsi Zero Sugar, You'll be 15 seconds closer to kickoff. Stock up now. Bengals game day is so close, you can almost taste it. Bengals watching. Better with Pepsi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. My name's Levi McCurdy, and this is episode 164. And we've got breaking news out the gate late last night. Rapper Little Dirk. Lil Dirk has been arrested by United States Marshals and is being held in Broward County Correctional Facility until he's extradited to California for his federal charge. And what are these charges, you ask? It's a murder for hire charge. What are we doing? Like, hey, dude. Hey, can't do that, you know? So for, uh, and it's for the unfortunate uh, death of uh, Quando Rondo's cousin, Lil Pab, or L-U-L-P-A-B. I don't know how you, Lil Pob, Lil Pub, I guess, maybe. I, I don't, I don't, I apologize uh, with all due respect. I, I, I apologize for not knowing how to announce the name. But what this has me thinking is with, Lil Durk now being another one of these these rappers who is now inevitably locked up for doing something silly. Uh, I think it's finally time for me to refocus on my rap career. What are we doing? Once now that there's pretty much this void in the rap community. I think it's time for me to come back. I mean, and for those of you who don't know, those of you who, you know, is is, or need to be in the know, once upon a time, I myself was, in fact, uh, probably one of the hottest rappers in the game. What are we doing? Like, when we talk, when you, you thought the Drake and Kendrick thing was explosive, when I was on the scene... We don't even need to talk about the year 2009, okay? What are we doing? So, I mean, and to, for we've got it right here. We've got it pulled up, right? This, yeah, this is uh, this is one of my tracks, okay? It's fire, all right. Just listen, listen to my verse. You know what I mean? Here it is. Ready? Kid, you know that. Don't Here it is. No one but Kodak. Kodak. She asked me what I'm doing, making history, bitch. You know that I spit fire, I spit flame. Hardest newbie in the game. They say I seem insane, but I feel like I'm deranged. Tyree Mines, make shit flow. Walk on water, don't need no boat. I got card tricks out the yin yang. Hop on my carpet, we can coast. No need to boast. Ask your girl who's the dopest. I'm the mostest. My name is Sparks, bitch. That's all I have. Yeah. What are we doing? You already know what it is. It's Kodak, my boy Sparks. Woo! You know what I mean? So, like, that's down. what I, me and my boy, we were rappers, okay? We were pretty much the hottest in the city, okay? And so, listen, now that there's a void, I, I need to be the voice. I need to be the voice of the rap game now that Lil Durk is locked up and just inevitably off the scene. What are we doing? So I, you know what I mean? RIP to the victim of his crime, but what a crazy charge. Listen, man, these these boys are out here wilding. These boys are out here wilding, doing silly goose things, things they're not supposed to be doing, but... You know what I mean? We gotta keep we gotta keep that 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 art, that industry, the 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 hip hop, the rap alive because all we've got on the charts right now is Post Malone's country album. What are we doing? And we can't really we need something. We can't Machine Gun Kelly's just emo and rock and roll now. We don't have any other 
There's not much going on in the rap industry. Like, we've got Ice Cube and Exhibit putting out new music, dude. So I think it's time for me to refocus on my rap career. I mean, you heard it. It, it, it's, it was nothing but bars back in 2010. It's nothing but bars now. You heard the mistletoe track we dropped last year. Wait till this year's holiday drop. Okay, it's coming. It's coming real soon. We're going to drop it early this year, just in time for the holiday season, the 2024 holiday season, because it's been a wild year. It's been a wild ride, and we've got a lot to be thankful for. So we're working on it now. We're in the studio. We're working with some actual movers in the music scene. We're getting uh, we're getting everything produced and mastered. It's going to be one of probably probably one of the number one hits this holiday season. What are we doing? So be on the lookout for that and just know now that uh, you know that someone needs to have. Someone needs to be the leader. Someone needs to have a voice in the rap community here in the end of 2024, and I think it should be me. So I am going to probably, we're probably going to drop a tape. We're probably going to drop a mixtape here in the next few weeks, next few days probably, and then we'll drop a full-length studio album. We'll have music videos for every single song on the album, Twitter campaign, Facebook, social media, podcast interviews, the whole nine yards. It's coming. Be on the lookout. I think we just got Rogan scheduled. He's doing something today with someone. I think he might have Trump on. Big freaking deal. I'm going to be on next week, so you can guarantee we're probably going to double Trump's numbers. What are we doing? So we'll be on promoting the new music on all of your favorite podcasts here real soon to pretty much take over. So uh, look out and uh, get ready. I'm excited. I'm excited for the music. It's some of the best music. If you thought KSI's new music was great, dude, just wait till you hear what I'm about to drop. So listen, this New York City goldfish story is something that is just ripped straight out of the 2024 yearbook and it is something that belongs in history it needs to be documented it needs to be fully understood and you need to understand how hilarious this entire story actually is what are we doing so this became a thing a few months ago and it just it quickly became one of those tiny little things that like People who didn't or were searching for some form of sense of belonging and or friendship and or just a place where they could go to just take a deep breath and maybe just clear some anxiety out. Whatever it is that you were searching for, you would theoretically find it at this this little puddle in the ground that what that we're calling. What are we calling it? The puddle in the ground. We're calling it the, uh, it's the, it's the fire hydrant fish pond. Okay. And it's this New York city, uh, bed It's bed New York, this fire hydrant fish pond that, uh, a few months ago was brought to my attention by none other than Casey Neistat, but it, this viral sensation on TikTok took over the feeds of a few million people in the sense that this leaky, dirty water straight from the New York City sewer system of a fire hydrant was leaking into this garden area of a New York City sidewalk. And what quickly happened was the leaky fire hydrant made a little pond and a little puddle. And at first, it was this clear little pool of water puddle. And as a joke, one of the residents nearby said, let's go to Walmart, get some like 20 cent goldfish and toss them bitches in the puddle and make a TikTok about it. And then it went viral because that's the theme. This is the theme of 2024. What you people need to realize is, is that the theme of 2024 to go viral, you have to be the stupidest fucking thing on the planet. You have to be demure. You have to be Hawk Tua. 
you have to be, uh, you have to be, um, you have to, you have to be involved in a pl- in a hire for murder plot to stab your mother who did nothing but get you free trips to Disney World as a child. And in return, you have the love of your life stab her, Gypsy Rose. What are we doing? In 2024, to go viral, you have to be the cringiest thing on the planet. And what better way than a New York City puddle from a leaky fire hydrant with some goldfish in it for people to find a sense of belonging. And, you know, at the risk of his marriage, dude, Casey Neistat made a video on this whole thing, okay? For those of you who don't know, Casey Neistat, every time he makes a video now, it's it's basically him and Candace, they have to go, they have to do like four or five couples therapy sessions in order to avoid divorce. What? And so what are we doing? That's what I meant to do. You know what I mean? Sometimes the button's a little finicky on this, on this, on this button presser. You, that happens at least once an episode and it kind of pisses me off. What are we doing? But anyways, so you know what I mean? Candace gets pissy every time Casey makes a video. So you, you know, it has to be important when Casey gets, uh, the cameras out and uploads once again. So for the first 15 uh, minutes of his video. It's just drone shot after drone shot and him on a skateboard and him getting there to the pond. And this is essentially, uh, this is essentially the, the pond and look how dirty the water is. What are we doing? How are you doing? What's your name? Uh, Dakota. Dakota. Nice to meet yeah, you. Nice to meet you too. Hold on. There's a shot of the water coming. So why do you why do you start the uh, the bedside aquarium, the koi pond? Me and my friends, my friends said, "What if we put some fish in here?" And we thought it was a joke. And he went and bought the fish. And then from there, we cleaned it out. Me and my friends smoked the fattest fucking blunt one day. What are we doing? And we got high as shit. I was with them. I was there. I was with them doing it. And they, we got, they were so, we had, we had gummy. It's legal in New York now. We had flour. We had gummy. We had all sorts of shit. And someone said, yo, what if we put, what if we put fish in there? And uh, so we went, we went and got fish and it was a joke. And then guess what? People started coming, and so we thought, shit, we're viral, dude. You know what I mean? Then went and bought another hundred fish. A hundred every- fish? What are we doing? Uh, Day from there, I'd just be taking care of it, and we take turns making sure things is appropriate, and i will just keep going from there. Every time I come by, I like do a little check with the fishies, and I love it. It's just super sweet. I'm Carol from Sunbury, Ohio. I'm a Republican, but I don't care who does the job as long as the job gets done. That's why I like Sherrod Brown. He stood up to both parties on China and worked with Republicans to fight fentanyl because Sherrod fights for Ohio. That's leadership. Paid for by friends of Sherrod Brown. This episode is brought to you by United Airlines. When you want to make the most of your vacation, book with United. They're an airline that cares about your travels as much as you do. United is transforming the flying experience with Bluetooth connectivity, screens, power at every seat, and bigger overhead bins to help fit everyone's bag. And with their app, you can skip the bag check line, get live updates, and more. Change the way you fly. Book your next trip today at united.com. Brooklyn is a lot of community, and I know that Brooklyn in general can get like a lot of stigma just about the crime and the violence and everything like that, but there's so much community here. There. What are we doing? These poor goldfish are in this, uh, this non-temperature controlled 
New York City drainage water leaking out of probably what is a rusty fire hydrant. What are we doing? With all sorts of rubber duckies and dirt and shit. It's New York City. And this is what it looks like. Can you tell what this is on the screen? What quality do we have from Nystat? It's Nystat. It's 4K. Can we load it in 4K and go back? Let's see what happens. A place to set up a goldfish. No. But there's here so we much go. community here. 4K, babes. What is this? What are we looking at? What are we doing? It's disgusting. <laughs> It's disgusting New York City water, and these poor goldfish are probably, like, they probably are suffering so hard. They bought 100 fish and put it in here. So this is what it was. And what nobody realized, what no one thought to think, and I can't believe that's a statement I just said, what no one thought to think is that maybe at some point in time, Maybe that just maybe, I don't know, the New York City Fire Department would come along and potentially, I don't know, fix the leak. What are we doing? And clean it all up because you can't have a freaking outside city door community fish pond in the middle of a leaky fire, it's just something, it's unfortunate, I get it, it's cute, it's adorable, I love it, it's a, it's precious. Casey Neistat, you know what I mean, we love him, it's great, New York City, the snowboarding video, fan-freaking-tastic. But what you gotta, re listen to this, this lady, this is the best thing you've seen all day. So unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I've got sad, sad news, spoiler alert, the New York City Fire Department came and fixed it and cleaned it all away. You know what I mean? What are we doing? Department says it is a safety issue. Yeah, they need to have access to hydrants in case of an emergency. But some in the community love the pond and they wanted it to become a permanent fixture. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Charlesworth is live in Brooklyn with the story. Michelle. Listen to Michelle. Well, uh, you know, the, the fish died because they didn't have any water because the firefighters came here over the last day, actually yesterday, and they did what they always do. They check on hydrants. Every what are we doing? Well, uh, listen, here's what happened. The fish died because guess what? They need water to survive. And this dude, Michelle, poor Michelle. Michelle has been dying. Michelle has been trying so hard so hard to climb that ladder at her job. She wants a raise. She wants a better position. She wants her own stories. She wants to be on TV. She wants to be reporting on original stories. She wants to be seen. This is what she's been working for for 20 plus years. What are we doing? And when she finally has gotten her big break, when she finally has gotten to where she, th listen, Hey, Michelle, you're going out. It's you, babe. Report on this story. It's a viral sensation. Real big, real big numbers on TikTok. She finally comes to the realization that the story ain't shit. I'm in fixture. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Charlesworth is live in Brooklyn with the story. Michelle. Well, uh, you know, the the fish died. You can't. What are we doing? doing? Well, the fish died. Uh, well, uh, you know, the the fish died. I can't. I love it. I love it. Well, Every uh, you know, the, the fish died. The what are we doing? They didn't have any water because the firefighters came here Ugh. over the last day, actually yesterday. Bastards. And they did what they always do. They check on hydrants every six months. But they had to fix the leaky hydrant. So wow. they sealed the leak. They sealed the... Look at this. They even have a library going. They've got a library going over here. We've got donations for the homeless over here benches so you can eat your lunch this has become a public now community gathering place in the middle of bed new york what are we doing and so it's fun times it's fun times but we're pissy we're really pissy because true they killed all my fucking fish the hydrant and uh people in the neighborhood say they love the fish 
And they want it to be fire safe, but they right. want to see if maybe there's some way that this neighborhood can somehow have it. Listen, if it has to come down to us or the fish, if it has to come down to if our building catches on fire, we'd rather the fish have a nice little pond to swim in and they can what isn't there another fire hydrant down the street they can attach to if our building's on fire what are we doing can we just not run the hose down to the next one that's not leaking just run the hose down to the next one if our building's on fire and we want to just keep our little pond here so don't fix the leak okay can we not do that is that not a possibility the hydrant and uh people in the neighborhood say they love the fish and they want it to be fire safe, but they want to see if maybe there's some way that this neighborhood can somehow have it all. We didn't hurt anything. Oh, God, look how worse what it What are we got. doing? Look how muddy. Oh, you can't even see it anymore. You can't even see it anymore. It's it's muddy rainwater. All the fish are dead anyways, dude. What are we doing? Ah, uh, come on, guys. <sighs> What hurt it was when they turned the water. Go, go back. Come on. Did you all. see that fish? We didn't hurt anything. You can barely see the what fish in there. there. What is the? Come on, man. There's like cigarette ashes when everywhere. They the water off. This is what the spot looks like now. Damn, Gone. They fucked it up. Dozens of. Li Look at all the dead fish. What are we doing? How dare they put this on TV? By the way, they could have blurred that out sensitive eyes watching little like, goldfish this damn. is what it looked like before these fish and the little hydrant aquarium were a favorite <sighs> neighborhood curiosity i just came over to see it i didn't know that i was shut down i'm finding out that all the fish are dead i'm kind of sad about it i just came over to like sit uh. down and have my lunch there but i guess it's gone a leaky hydrant and you're just gonna sit down and have your lunch by a muddy pond what bottle. are we doing of water it made this summer is what started all of this whimsicality uh, but securing and sealing the hydrant on tuesday is what ended it look look at his face remember the fireman that did it remember these faces if you what see are we them doing? in the public street if you see them out on the street and they're doing their jobs beat the shit out of them beat the ever-living shit out of these two new york city firefighters who shut down the bed new york aquarium if you see them Dude, I mean, come on, dude. You didn't, don't take my advice. I'm just, it's, I'm, it was a joke. I'm kidding. Don't actually do anything, but th it's, this is what he's treating it like. If, look at these faces. Look at these faces. What are we doing? What started all of this whimsicality, is, but securing and sealing the hydrant on Tuesday look at these evil is what people. ended it. Look, look at his face. Remember the fireman that did it. Kill all the fish. People enjoy this place. We had international media attention, and yet, Somehow, I'm a licensed architect. I'm part of the team for this. Listen, we've got a board what of directors. We we've got a board of directors for the Bay Sty Aquarium. Listen, I'm a part of the team, okay? Here's what I need you to know. I've put my heart and soul into this whole thing. I've been at work for no less than 20 hours a day. I have gotten zero sleep. My girlfriend has left me. She took the dog. I have no money. I quit my job because I thought they promised us 401ks. They promised us benefits. They told us that the Bayside Aquarium, I am I am a Bayside Aquarium team supporter, board of directors, president. What are we doing? And they promised us within six months we would get picked up. We go viral. We start making money in the, in the official bank account we got set up. And there's no... There's no money, and I'm a little p I'm pissed because I put in all this Literally. work and effort, Kill and it just fish. people enjoy this place. This poor we man. had international media attention, and yet somehow I'm a licensed architect. I'm part of the team for this. I helped build the aquarium. It wasn't supposed to get dirty. What like are we that. doing? This, I live on this block. No city agency reached out to us. You know when you're a kid what? and you like promise never to grow up too much? Yes. And yes. you stay full of wonder stay full. and do crazy things? Yes. Is that what this is? That's what it was. How do yeah. you stay this way? I was a Boy Scout. Come on. Yeah. I like stuff like that. You're a country boy living in the city. Yes, Aquarium man. keeper. You see that? That is a solar panel. Oh, here we go. Listen. Okay. This is Michelle's final thoughts. Listen to Michelle. She's got one more line of disbelief. What are we doing? Listen to Michelle. I love her. She's my new favorite. I want her in front of the camera 24-7. Michelle. And there's actually a heater attached 
This was all part of their whole plan to keep the fish alive during the winter by regulating the temperature of the water. <laughs> what are we doing? They got some jank Timu Amazon Basics water heater attached to a solar panel that they were going to use so that the goldfish outside in the leaky, dirty water aquarium could survive the New York City winter where temperatures can really just get to below zero, freezing, and this tiny, janky, cheap water heater with a solar panel attached to it is going to keep the fish alive during the winters of New York City. What are we doing? And Michelle is in disbelief. It's just she, her attitude is fantastic. Panel. And there's actually a heater attached. This was all part of their whole plan to keep the fish alive during the winter by regulating the temperature of the water. What are we doing? And there you have it. The New York City Fire Department has single-handedly destroyed the lives of at least several thousand New York residents uh, this week as they fixed the leaky fire hydrant uh, in uh, Bed-Stuy, Bed Bed New York, man. I mean, wow. It's, it's wow. It's a wow situation. Listen, we don't really have too much other news this week, so of course you know we got to recap Love is Blind. We are done with the episodes now. The only thing that we have left coming in a few days is the reunion where we can see the recap of the whole season for the first half. Just a big waste of time, Nick Lachey. What are we doing? But then the other half will get all of the juicy questions answered. Well, I'm sure we'll get the juicy questions answered throughout the show to keep it interesting. But, you know, the recaps are annoying because we all just spent the last 16 hours dedicating our entire lives to this stupid show, dude. And listen, it's just, it's getting worse as we move along. What are we doing? It just, it's getting really bad out there and I can't really put my finger on it, but it basically comes down to the fact that we've got to scrap this whole thing. We have got to go back to the drawing board, we need to re- get Nick and Vanessa in a room and say what's working and what's not. And basically the not list should be 90% of the show and how it currently is. What are we doing? Because I think everyone is in agreement that at this point in season seven of Love is Blind, the pods just don't seem to be working, Okay. Because when it comes to the entire freaking point of the show is we are supposed to prove that two people can meet without knowing anything about the looks of each other and still fall in love so much so that they're ready to get married within a four week span time. And so with that being said, that's been proven. What are we doing? That's basically the like last reason on the list as to of why all of these couples break up. It very rarely has to do with the looks. Nine times out of 10, it's not the look. Sure, do we get someone who is just so overwhelmingly disgusted by the person that they chose to marry in the pods once they get the reveal? Ah, she's not necessarily Megan Fox. What are we doing? But she's kind of, if you put her in a certain amount of not a lot of light and put her at a certain angle, she kind of sort of maybe, if she just kind of, depending on what she's wearing, looks maybe a little bit like Megan Fox from like, I don't know, like four or five years ago. What are we doing? She's not... Maybe you could pull it off. It's not very, even your friends agree, sweetheart. But listen, so with that kind of situation, we don't ever really get a breakup or a non-marriage ending result on Love is Blind anymore due to looks. And so it ultimately ends due to everything else that comes along 
with streamlining these people into a marriage for the rest of their lives in four weeks time. They have literally a week to maybe 10 to 12 days in the pod, a week in Mexico, and then two weeks outside of the pod to get their shit together in the apartments, back at home, make all of their arrangements, and then boom, you're walking down the aisle. What are we doing? And so this year, out of the gate, we got seven couples. And we're supposed to be excited for that number because... In years past, that number's been a lot lower, and the producers know that, so they stack the deck this year. But immediately, immediately, once they're out of the pods, we can instantly see that the connection between Brittany and Leo just didn't seem to be mutual. What are we doing? He was grabbing her. He was holding her keeping her captive. He's half like just kind of forcing himself on her, touching her when she clearly doesn't want to be anywhere near this person. They decide not to go to Cabo Wabo for the official honeymoon. They go to Miami instead. They break it off a few weeks later because of course, of course, Brittany just wanted the trip out of him. What are we doing? And look, we asked, since we're on it, speaking of Leo, we'll just talk about him real quick. We asked Vukum. We got Vukum verified. If you have to ask someone if they want to see your Rolex, it's not a real Rolex, bro. What are we doing? I guarantee you that Leo and Brittany show up to the reunion. Leo has at least three Rolexes on his arm and at least two to three pieces of art for sale. He's going to try to sell Nick and Vanessa Lachey a piece of art from his art gallery at the reunion. What are we doing? I guarantee it. So the show needs a format change, bro, because this thing, it's its just, we said it last year. We said it this year. Los just dropped his response to the show. He feels the same way. We weren't putting the energy of recap and record behind this, baby girls. If you thought, that Carlos and I were going to dedicate our lives and come together once a week or bi-weekly, however they drop these this season for this outcome, you've got another What are we doing? Coming. There's no way a chance in hell that we would have been satisfied with ourselves wasting that time. So you get individual raps, his drops today, mine drops today. That's how our brains work because we're on the same wavelength. What are we doing? And so Los feels the same way. We've got to switch up the format of the show. We've got to do something about the pod situation. We've got to start vetting these people more. Whatever that the producers know and don't know and whatever they think is good television needs to be 180'd. The fact that once we get to the apartment stage and we get our phones back and we're on Instagram and we're Googling everyone's name because we want to see what the other pod mates look like. What are we doing? And then all chaos breaks loose and then like your family comes in and your job and your responsibilities and your money and your ability to cook Pasta. What are we doing? Can that please be a prerequisite? Ramses couldn't cook pasta. Nick D couldn't did doesn't even know how to turn on a stove, let alone put water in a pot, let alone boil the water, let alone cook the pasta, let alone make his wife a pasta freaking dinner. What are we doing? Can we make that a prerequisite for all men on the show moving forward, please? Like, I'm sorry. But the, the statute of limitations, if you are 25 years old or older and you don't know how to boil water, put the pasta in, cook it for 12 to 15 minutes, depending on what type of pasta it is and how well you want it cooked, and then heat up the sauce at minimum. What are we doing? You could do way more. Add a meat. Add seasoning, add a few other things, add heavy cream, add a cheese to that sauce, kick it up a notch! What are we doing? It's Gordon Ramsay and this bitch. I did this shit last night. We had a nice little chicken on top. We had a nice creamy, cheesy marinara vodka, uh, penny a la vodka sauce, okay? It's delish. 
We season it up real good. The chicken's banging. The noodles are perfectly done. Two types of garlic bread. What are we doing? I said to Megs last night, I dropped two types of garlic bread on her lap. And she said, what the fuck is this? And I said, hey, if the Cheesecake Factory has the balls to give you two different, three different types, I'm sorry, three different types of bread, I'm bringing you two different types of garlic bread with your spaghetti tonight, babe. What are we doing? And that is proof that your man loves you. Ladies, listen up. If your man or woman, whoever you're married to, whatever kind of shit you're down with, if your significant other has never brought you two types of garlic bread with your spaghetti dinner, have a serious sit down conversation with them. And if in fact they don't do it next time you have spaghetti within the next three to six months, get them out. What are we doing? They don't love you. And so love is blind, dude. We got to switch it up. We got to switch it up. We've got to change the format. We've got to do something about the outcome of this show. Because I said it last time we covered it on Recap and Record. Shout out to Los. And I'll say it again this season. We got out the gate. Out the gate with seven couples. We got to Cabo Wabo with six we got to the apartments, I think, with either five or all six. But by the time we got to the aisles, four more were dropped, and only two of our couples out of the pods got to their wedding day. What are we doing? And so what I think the producers of the show and Nick and Vanessa and everybody on the team over at Netflix is assuming is that because we had two people get to the weddings and we had two couples say I do because we can knock these bitches out right now too, they're counting that as 100% success. What are we doing? I'm saying to you right now because they had two show up to the weddings, the team at Netflix are assuming that because all parties said yes, it is a just 100% success. Okay. So Taylor and Garrett. Okay. Listen, they had a few bumps in the road, Taylor and Garrett. The only bump they had, Taylor didn't want to uh, announce her mom's name. My girl Fong. Okay. Shout out to Fong. Love her. I'll take Fong on a date. I love, I love me and mama Fong. What are we doing? She's fantastic. I love, I love Taylor too. She's fantastic as well. I think she's adorable, but they're also just a boring couple. And of course they just said, I do. The only problems they had was he texted an ex and kind of lied about it. And then I guess never did it again because she was over it five minutes later the next morning. And then of course we have Tyler and Ashley. They both said yes. And the only really overcoming the thing that they needed to get through was the fact that, uh, mm, Tyler, most definitely 100% gave some of his lesbian friends some of his sperm to have a baby. What are we doing? And at first, Ashley was like, no way, bro. I'm not down with that. Then she thought about it. Then she came around. And now she's on board. And they both said I do at the altar. And now both Tyler and Ashley and Taylor and Garrett from Love is Blind season, season seven are married and they both said yes. Now, rumors in the Twitter sphere uh, are claiming that Tyler just not only didn't really mm, have a sperm donation with his lesbian friend situation, uh, rumors are he might have some other biological children. What are we doing? And I think maybe the baby mama has spoken out. So let's, we're going to wait until the reunion to spill that tea and we'll see where these two uh, stand as uh, it comes to their marriage. And uh, Tyler's children allegedly adopted lesbian donation children, potentially paternal children, I think there might be baby mama drama. What are we doing? We'll see, dude. We will see. So, of course, we have Brittany and Leo. Um, who else do we have? Oh, Monica, dude, and Steven. Monica and Steven. First of all, Steven's a freak. Steven's a freak, 
And all he wants from the beginning, as soon as they got to Cabo Wabo, he was like, I'm down to clown. Whatever you want, babe. What are we doing? Sex 24-7. Sex 24-7. Go to the gym, have sex. Come home, have sex. Go to the gym, go to work, have sex. Come home, have sex again with you, babe, because I love having sex. And you know what else I love? Butt stuff. And that's what he said. What are we doing? And he's a little weird, and he's fucking obsessed, dude. I mean, we're not kink shaming, but homeboy got caught. Frickin' texting the ex again. We've got a few ex texters this season, and that's about the maximum amount of drama that Netflix threw on the table. They said, hold on to your seats, folks. We've got a real dramatic season ahead of us, and all we got was like two dudes texting their exes. What are we doing? One was real mild. We kind of got over it real quickly. But uh, Richard, uh, I'm sorry, Stephen Richardson's text to his ex, whoo, things came to a halt pretty quickly with Miss Monica, okay? Sexting your ex while you're engaged to be married with someone else is a big no-no. What are we doing? And we'll get to some of the other no-nos when it comes to marriage and relationships here in a few moments, just as a part of our Your Weekly Relationship Advice, brought to you by the What Are We Doing podcast and our sponsor, Dude Robe. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of the What Are We Doing podcast is brought to you by Dude Robe. Listen, all you got to do is go to dudrobe.com. You're going to start doing some shopping. You got robes with the towel lining, the hoodie uh, material on the outside, the hood, the attached belt. So you never lose it. The tech pockets on the inside, the one on the outside, two on the outside, one on the inside. It's the ultimate robe for dudes, women, kids, teens, adults, get your whole family dude robes this season for Christmas. You won't regret it. Dudrobe.com. D U D E R O B E.com. Promo code WAD. W-A-W-D, dudrobe.com, and at checkout, if you use promo code WAD, you get 20% off your whole freaking order. What are we doing? And I can't be more clear. These guys got it all. They've got the slides. They've got the shorts. They've got the lounge pants. They've got the t-shirts. They've got the hoodies now. They've got the robes now. Fill your whole closet with dude robe, Mark Cuban approved because they were on Shark Tank, dude. Dude robe, Mark Cuban, Shark Tank, dudrobe.com is where you go for your holiday shopping this year. And what better way to save not only yourself, your pockets, your family, your bank account, some cash when it matters the most this holiday season than using promo code WAD, that's W-A-W-D, when you check out at dudrobe.com. Do it now. If you're a real one, you know exactly what I mean. Check it out, dudrobe.com. It's a perfect gift for mom, dad, the kids, your fiance, your math teacher in high school. What are we doing? So go to dudrobe.com. Purchase everything they have in their inventory today and save 20% with promo code WAD, W-A-W-D. Back to the show. What are we doing? You know when you reach that age where everyone and their mother won't shut up about their credit scores, yet it seems like no one really understands what's so special about those three random numbers? That's because credit scores are meaningless. Unless you have Credit Karma to show you how to use them. We use those three random numbers, plus your financial profile, to help you find your next opportunity. Like a more rewarding credit card, a game plan that helps you pay down debt faster, or a personal loan to help you save more on interest payments each month. Cha-ching! Download Intuit Credit Karma today to get started. This episode is brought to you by CarMax. Searching for your next car? Don't settle. Thrive! At CarMax, it's easy to shop online or in person. With upfront pricing and tools designed to help, finding a car you love has never been easier. Plus, you can sell or trade in your current vehicle with an online offer in minutes. No strings attached. Start shopping now to find a car you'll love at CarMax.com. CarMax, the way it should be. So, Monica and Steven aren't together. Who else do we have? Oh, dude, Hannah and Nick D, dude. Okay, first of all, 
Nick D, he was the one. Listen, Nick D can't boil a pot of water. And Hannah is just, how do I say this as nicely as possible? Hannah is one of the biggest fuck bitch in the goddamn place. What are we doing? She is the meanest, nastiest person. I pray, I pray on the side of my bed every night to any man or woman, any man, most likely men, any man or woman who is ever with this woman, Hannah Giles, I think her name, Hannah Giles, Giles, I don't know how to pronounce it, and I don't give a shit because she's a piece of trash. Dude, this bit, she hurt my man Nick D's feelings, What are we dude. doing? She hurt my man's feelings. She said he was a little boy and that she's growing him into a man. Bitch, he's a man. Listen, just because he lives at home in the basement of his mom's house, bitch, you know six people right now who are in the same situation. What are we doing? Like, get the fuck out of here, Hannah J. No one freaking likes you. I hope, here's my prediction for the reunion of Love is Blind season seven. I hope Nick D shows up with his big cock swinging all over the goddamn stage. What are we doing? I hope when they bring up everything Hannah said nasty, nasty to Nick D, I hope they replay it all and Nick D just throws his big fuck on the table and he says, hey guys, guess what? Since the show, I moved out of my mom's house. What are we doing? Hey guys, since the show, I've had a girlfriend for six to nine months now. What are we doing? Hey guys, since the show, I've sold 18 houses and I make over six figures a year and I'm pretty fucking independent. What are we doing? And I want him to come out the gate swimming. I want him to, I want him to hit so many home runs. I want the update for Nick D to send Hannah through the fucking room. What are we doing? I want Hannah to regret every nasty thing she ever said to Nick D. And I want him to succeed so bad. I'm praying. I am praying to the gods. I am praying to Nick Lachey and his wife that we get the justice we need for Nick D. What are we doing? Hashtag justice for Nick D because Hannah's a fucking bitch, dude. Jesus, man. So obviously they're not together. Alexandra and Tim, this whole thing, listen, man, I'm not judging anyone, okay? That's not what we do on this podcast, even though it kind of sounds like it every single week. What are we doing? But I'm not judging, but this relationship out the pods was kind of like bleh, bleh, bleh for me, okay? When it came to the sister's rings around the neck, when it came to the bracelet he gave her, bro, did he get that back? What are we doing? Because we didn't see that on camera. We didn't see him getting that bracelet back. He better go back and get fucking sister's bracelets or mom and dad are going to be pissed. Okay, listen, I'm, listen, I get it. I understand. The loss of a family member is one of the most tragic things you can ever probably most ever endure like you know what i mean like that you can just you you there the feeling is infathomable but to to make that your identity it's i i understand it's a family thing and it's maybe maybe it's not it's just me it's me i'm the asshole what are we doing i'm the asshole i'm sorry but the whole thing was weird to me from the beginning and then him meeting her family and that whole situation and the straw that broke Alexandra's back and Tim just said, hey, I'm donezo funzo with this, whatever other word rhymes with donezo funzo. I was going for a three-peat there and it, my brain just kind of shut down instantly on the third word. But basically, man, Tim's family came over and they had a great time. They were talking, they were chatting. And then the cameras left and Alexandra decided that it was nap time. What are we doing? While her in-laws, future in-laws were still in the building. Now, I don't know etiquette, okay? I don't know what the proper rules are, but when anyone like an in-law, Meg's parents, my parents, anytime a parent is at 
your place or we're at a parent's house, like whatever the situation may be, if you find yourself at you or your significant other's parent's house or they are in your place of living, your apartment, your house, my assumption is you don't go take a nap. What are we doing? Now, if like they came over unannounced, they're just dropping something off, you work late, you have a weird work schedule, you're tired, hey, I'm gonna come over while you're taking a nap, I'm gonna drop something off, boom, I'll, I'll get out, whatever, I'm not trying to be in your space, it's a quick thing, that's fine, that's a normal thing, but when you're in the courting process of trying to marry someone for the rest of your life and you're meeting this man's parents for like this the first or second time ever, I would venture to guess that the wrong thing to do is to go into the bedroom, lay down, and take a nap. What are we doing? If they're still in the room, if they're there, if they left with the cameras, then by all means, sweetheart, go take a nap. But from what Tim said in the breakup letter, he basically was like, yo, the cameras just stopped rolling, but my parents were still here and you went and took a nap. So my girl was tired, but it wasn't enough. What are we doing? So they broke up. And then the number one, the number one couple that we were kind of voting for, and I mean, these two were just a roller coaster of emotions the entire time, okay? These two, Marissa and Ramses, just, we were, we were really cheering them on, man. I thought they were a great couple. I thought they were gonna get over him being married in the past, but a bitch kept bringing it up. What are we doing? And when I say bitch, I mean Ramses. Marissa was done. She didn't give a shit. She was like, you were married, whatever, fuck it. I was in the military, fuck it. We'll cancel, my it's fine. You were married, fuck it. You know the mistakes you made the first time, just don't make them again. Hey, Ramses, I wanna marry you for you and not your past. We all have a past. Let's move past it. I don't give a shit that you were married, but the bitch we call Ramses just kept bringing it up. What are we doing? And when we meet who rumors in the Twitter sphere, this is just what I'm hearing. This isn't, this isn't me at all. This is just a rumor, not an opinion of someone else. Apparently Ramses might be a little, he might be playing for the other team. Okay, if you know what I mean. Like, his, the guy who was there is his best friend. People are saying Ramses might be a little, a little bit closer to, and that's not the first time we've heard a Love is Blind contestant potentially being a player for the other team. What are we doing? With their male best friends. So it just, it's one of these situations where we were blindsided. Okay. And so at the very end, at the very end, I think of episode 10 or it was episode 11, maybe we get the breakup of Marissa and Ramses and his excuse to her is that he, he realized after talking to his friend, that his ex-wife was extremely hurt after their divorce and that he didn't want potentially Marissa to ever feel that way if they were to get married and then inevitably get divorced. What are we doing? And so for that, we have two exact points of how you know you, you are or you are not ready to get married Welcome to the What Are We Doing School of Love. My name's Levi, and this is episode one. Here's how you know you're ready to get married. Step number one. If you are thinking at any point in time before the wedding date, say you're getting married next year on like July 21st, right? Say you're flying to Cabo Wabo next year in July, you're getting married, and you've got about eh, nine months. You've got about eight to nine months before that date rolls around and we gotta fly out and do the damn thing, okay? If you have a thought, oh God, what if we get divorced? You're not ready to get married. What are we doing? Because that's not a thought you should A, either have, or B, even be worried about. Because if you know that you're marrying your best friend and that's forever for the rest of your life, 
then you get freaking Mary, dude. And hey, by the way, step number two, welcome to phase number two at the What Are We Doing podcast Relationship Advice Academy. If you are engaged to be married to someone and you do have the intrusive thought of ah, divorce, what happens? Listen to me. There's only a finite amount of things. There is only a list of 10 to 20 things that would seriously cause a divorce. What are we doing? And so when it comes to those things, anytime those things come up, just go, hey, no thanks. What are we doing? Anytime an ex texts you, you respond, hey, no thanks. What are we doing? And block the number. Anytime you're out alone and a cute, attractive girl comes up to you, someone you might think, oof, she's attractive. I could see myself with, hey, go out loud. Hey, you're, you're great. Yeah, you're really nice, but I have a fiance. I have a wife. No, thank you. What are we doing? And by the way, with a wife, you're married. Why are you out alone? What are we doing? Without your wife. And so anything on that list, oh, what are you, what, 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 what? You're at work and your secretary said, hey, no, thank what you. What are we doing? I have a wife. You walk away. You say no. You don't cheat on your wife. You don't do the things that you know you're not supposed to do in your marriage. You just, it's that simple. So the format of the show is we are supposed to, they broke up and the poor girl, she sobbed her eyes out. She couldn't take it anymore. Poor Marissa. I was rooting for her. She was fantastic. I love that poor girl. I hope she finds her Prince Charming. Little Buddy was not okay. Ramses was not okay. If she was going back into the military, that was it. Her mom, dude, let's talk about Marissa's mom. Marissa's mom, insane. What are we doing? This lady is going to chop someone's balls off. She already has two of her past husbands. What are we doing? And so it's like, bro, you showing up 50 plus years old in a leather jacket with a fucking tongue ring, your hair dyed black, dead ass hair with a Walmart fucking dye box kit to meet your daughter's potential future husband. And the first thing out of your mouth is, yeah, I don't really understand your vibe, bro. I'm not feeling it. You're going to break her heart. And when you do, I'm going to cut your fucking balls what off. What are we doing? Are the words that came out of Marissa's mother's mouth. And so, of course, when she got that call with her crying, oh, it's over, you know, mom was on high alert, private jet, all expenses paid directly to her daughter with a knife in her hand, ready just to cut the balls off of this man. And by balls, I mean at least one, if not both of his dreadlocks. What are we doing? And so we just, man, the couples this year just were not really all that great. The The show is, is failing, of course, with everyone who watches it. We're, of course, probably going to get a, a season eight, nine, and ten. It just, it's inevitable at this point, but we're just... It's like one of those things that we all hate and we all agree upon, but no matter what they do, even if they continue to do the same thing over and over again, it's just going to keep being boring. There's only so much drama we can get. Whether Nick D describes himself as like Superman Clark Kent out the pods or fucking or Hannah. I think Hannah described herself as like Lady Gaga, dude. What are we doing? Some crazy shit. It's like the pods are weird. It's strange. We don't really like it anymore, but of course we're going to keep watching. Listen, we're going back to Love Island, Australia, babes. That's where we'll be. That's exactly where we'll be. Listen, we've got this Donald Trump, uh, this Donald Trump news that, uh, I think everyone is well aware of right now. Last week for about 45 minutes, Donald Trump was an employee temporarily at McDonald's here in Pennsylvania. What are we doing? And I told you all this last week, of course, it's just, it is a, 
It is a it is a situation that's about to get very weird very fast. I mean, he is just he's there. He's slinging fries. Look at him. Hey, the president of the United States is working at McDonald's. It just it's one of those situations where I mean, we can't even ah, dude, the volume, dude, comp, Jesus. Okay, so then here, so then here we have the cars that are allowed to pull up. It's so loud. It's so loud. Here, everybody. Oh here we go. God. Oh look my God. Fake, look at all the fake news over there. Hello, everybody. Look at all the fake news over there. What are we doing? Yes, thank you. Mr. President, please don't let the United States become Brazil, my native Brazil. Uh, we'll, we'll please, keep it good. Please, please. We'll keep it good, he says. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Mr. President. Yes. Windows closing on him, dude. So, and he loves it. So the best part about this is 20 minutes after Trump, uh, after Trump, where we start getting all the videos and all the photos of Trump working at McDonald's as just another campaign stunt. Every single Kamala Harris fan shouted, went straight to the rooftop, straight to the rooftop, straight to the slanted roofs in central Pennsylvania. What are we doing? To shout it out. He's not actually working there. It's closed. It's fake. They set it all up. What are we doing? Of course it's fake, you freaking idiots. Of course it's fake. Of course they had to set it up. You think Donald Trump just walked into McDonald's and signed his W his W9 and put an apron on and went on payroll and is now an employee? Of course they closed it. We couldn't risk a freaking Kamala Harris fan or someone who would say something nasty to him come through the drive-thru. They pre-screened everybody. They told him what to say. It was a photo op and it was fantastic. I mean, it's one of the best. Th I mean, this has been, this has been one of the most insane. It's an amazing business. It's an amazing country. And we're going to make America greater than ever before. We're going to do it. Are you going to see Aaron Rodgers? Like Look at the enthusiasm. I mean, that's thousands of people over there. They go miles back. Thousands of people were that's there. Incredible. So, there he is. Look at him. Are you going to be Aaron Rodgers? Oh, what do you want to wear? Aaron Game tonight, and tell us about getting started now. in your own career, Miss President. How did you tell, tell us about those jobs that people take early on to try to make a break and how you did it? This is a great job to take. It's a great job to take. McDonald's what are is a we great doing? place to work. If you need a job, McDonald's is a great place to work, and we've we've proved that in this country. Kamala Harris. I mean, Kamala Harris is, you know, she, she probably didn't even, we can't even find him. We can't even find him. And this is, this is now what the, this is now what the right is saying. We can't even find Kamala Harris's employment records at McDonald's. What are we doing? So we don't even know if she worked there ever. It's all a hoax. So now Trump's the number one candidate to ever work at McDonald's. Look at him. I mean, it's just he's. I could do this all day. He could do it all day. We could do it all day. I think I might come back and do it again. Okay, watch this. Look at that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. You made it possible for ordinary people like us to meet. You're not ordinary. Thank you so much, you for you. Right. Thank you. We pray for you. We pray for you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking a bullet for us. When you think about it, I guess that's right. When you think about it, what are we doing? I did. I did take a bullet for you, you ungrateful American citizens. I mean, it's just wow. Wow, we wow, wow, wow. Donald Trump working at McDonald's, I think, wasn't really on anyone's bingo card this year. But if you have that filled out and you got bingo already, let us know in the comments below. You win a prize. What are we doing? And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the bingo card for the year. I don't think we can have too many more surprises. I say that. With the election right around the corner, I think next week people are already voting. I think you can vote early in Pennsylvania. I think some people I know already voted. So early polls are open. I think mail-in ballots. I don't know how it works. 
I got to figure it out. I don't know. I'm still, hey, I'm in the undecided party. Ah, what are we no, doing? I'm just kidding. I don't really, we'll see. Megs and I will figure out where we have to go, what we have to do to actually go vote for someone. I'll probably just write myself in, in hopes that 300,000 other people do the same. So when you go to vote, you go to other and just write down Levi from the What Are We Doing podcast. Levi, the host of the What Are We Doing podcast or something along those lines. And if we get enough write-in votes, we could become the next president of the United States. What are we doing? I think it's a great idea. So I need your help. I need your help. I'm not only, like I said at the beginning of this episode, going to become the next best rapper and the best next viral rapping sensation here in America, number one on the charts, like I'm going to get the diamond plaque, the YouTube channel. We're going to have a diamond, silver and gold and ruby play button all in the same week. What are we doing? It's going to blow up. So we're not only going to take over the rap scene, but we're also probably going to do it while being sworn in as the next president of the United States. So on your ballads, come November next week, I'm pretty sure November 5th or something like that. November 5th is official voting day. Go out and write in Levi, host L-E-V-I, just like the jeans, babe, L-E-V-I from the What Are We Doing podcast. And I promise you, unlike others before me, I will actually, and this is the official slogan, we're going to get shirts made, quote, I will actually make America great again. What are we and doing? quote, dudes, write me in on the ballot. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Levi McCurdy. This has been another boring episode of the What Are We Doing podcast. I hope to see you guys next week at episode 165. We're getting closer and closer to Halloween. We'll be there next week for that episode. You peep my bluey vampire sweatshirt dog. Pick this up. It's the softest thing ever. I freaking love this thing. 10 bucks at the Walmart, fam. Go get yourself one. Catch us next week on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple, on Facebook, on Twitter, on X, on Instagram, on uh, basically every single freaking platform that you can imagine. We are the number one What Are We Doing podcast, even though there are imposters out there. If you go to YouTube right now and search for the What Are We Doing podcast, another new channel will pop up. What are we doing? I got to call someone on YouTube and figure this mess out because they're on episode 20. Now, will these guys survive past episode 100? Probably not. What are we doing? Will they overtake us in the rankings and search results? Probably not. Are we first? Yes. Are we the official one? Yes. Did they copies us? Yes. Hey, guys, your name? Gotta change what it. What are we doing? You gotta figure something else out. You're still new. We can still change it. And guess what? The people who aren't listening won't even know except for me and it'll make me really happy so we should change it anyways now before it's too late. Before I have to call the lawyers and figure out a game plan to get this other podcast removed, they obviously didn't do the research. Everyone knows you just have to go to Google and search for the name that you want to name your podcast before you name it your podcast. That way we don't have this problem. And you would have known due to my wonderful SEO skills and abilities that uh, there's already one What Are We Doing podcast on the block. What are we doing? Do you not hear the button every week? Every 30 seconds, every 15 seconds, overbearing in your ears. My name's Levi. This is episode 164. I'll see you guys next week. Peace out, everybody. What are we doing?